Okay, so now we're going to listen to a part two answer. Uh, the topic is to do with shopping. So you've got a shopping topic. Um, describe something you bought recently that you were happy with. Okay, that's quite a nice topic. Um, you know, remember that it doesn't always have to be honest. It doesn't always have to be accurate. Just something that you have a strong memory of buying. It doesn't have to be recent that you're confident that you can talk about. What was it? Where did you buy it? What was it for? And explain why it made you happy. Okay, so um, to go into a little bit more detail about, you know, why it was useful or why it was really good purchase or it was something that you've been saving up for for a long time. Okay, so let's see what this candidate talked about. Um, among those things that I recently purchased, um, I would pick a cell phone, which made me satisfied the most. Um, it is Samsung Galaxy S20 and it isn't the newest model, but it is not that old either. So... Uh, I think that is the best choice for me because it's not too expensive or not too cheap. So yeah, it's quite in the middle. And, uh, due to the situation, uh, I paid online and receive it at the Best Buy through curbside pickup parking lot. And, um, it made me so happy because my wife was so happy when I gave it to her for her birthday gift. Uh, it is probably the most expensive gift that I ever bought for her so far. The reason why I bought the new cell phone for my wife is uh, because my wife never spent money on any electronic devices. She's not so friendly about it. And it's been already five years for her to use her phone. And I just wanted to give her a little change in her life uh, because she's deserved to get all those benefits of the, you know, the develop the development of the uh, t technology. <laughs> yeah. So, um, what else? What else to say? Mm, yeah. So that's my purpose to buy the cell phone. Yeah. Okay. Oh, what a nice story. Someone who bought, who bought a, a phone for their wife. Like, oh, that's a, so I guess the kind of story that makes go, huh, I want to give you a high score just to being a nice human. <laughs> okay. So, uh, fluency, good fluency. The story kept moving. Um, at the end, you could hear, he was like, I've run out of things to say. Do I have anything else to say? No. The key point in IELTS part two if you're done speaking, you're done speaking. The more you sort of ramble on, the worse it's going to get. So when you've said everything you have to say, you're done. Wrap up, okay? Practice um, by yourself and time yourself for around two minutes. Um, and then you can you can start to feel when you're talking, when you feel like you've said about enough, okay? So don't feel like you have to keep going until the examiner stops you. Um. The thing I want to pick out a couple of things about grammar. So at the start, I just want to replay the very start of his answer again. Um, among those things that I recently purchased, um, I would pick a cell phone, which made me satisfied the most. Um, it is Samsung. So which made me satisfied the most? Okay, so among those things that I've bought, um, he, you shouldn't be saying those things because I don't, you, those, you're pointing to something, something I know. Oh, you know, you know those things I bought among them. This one made me the happiest. I don't know what things you bought. Okay, so it should just be among the things uh, that I purchased recently. Okay, because those is for when I know what you're talking about. Second thing, which made me satisfied the most, which made me the most satisfied. Okay, that's what it should be. Um, and it wasn't really, I mean, he's trying to paraphrase happy for satisfied, but it doesn't really connect or it doesn't really relate because satisfied is a slightly different word or, um, among the things that I bought, the thing which may, uh, the thing which satisfied me the most was, <laughs> um, uh, it doesn't really, it doesn't really sound natural. Okay. So the most natural way to say it is among the things that I've bought recently, 
the one which made me the most satisfied or the one which I would that I was most satisfied with was the Samsung Galaxy phone I bought for my wife. Okay, so it was slightly unnatural the phrasing that he did that. Um he struggled a little bit sometimes with third person plural. So he said at one point, my wife never spend money. Which of course, third person, my wife, third person never spends money. Okay, should be the correction. Um, uh, but I did like how he used this quite natural phrase. We said, I just wanted to give her a little change. That was a very nice, I just wanted to is a very natural native speaker phrase to use. Okay, so let's take a look at his next answer. Uh, shopping. Do you like shopping in big malls? And what do some people like? What do, uh, it should be why. Why do some people like to buy expensive goods? Okay, so let's find out. Uh, I absolutely do love shopping in the big malls uh, because there are so many things to look around and eat. Mm, I usually go to shopping center called Metro Town located in Burnaby, uh, Vancouver, VC, uh, and I never felt bored inside the mall. Uh, if you're a fan of an electronic device, then you can easily find out which product is newly released. And if you're interested in fashion, you can do the window shopping in the H&M and you can sometimes even try them on if you want. And, uh, also, sometimes uh, you can even watch the, some small performance at the center square. Plus, since they're, the place is so fast, it may be a good exercise as well. And uh, for other question, uh, those, those are people who prefer to purchase luxury goods. I think they believe that uh, those things that like Porsche or Gucci stuff, um, maybe they think that those things would represent them. I know there are some people who have um, certain pur purpose to buy them because of the safety or quality, but um, others like who buy them just because it's a fancy thing, then they usually might feel there is something lacking in their life uh, it could be a confidence, joy, or like um, any um, dark aspect of your life. Yeah, I believe <clears throat> that um, they might need to change their hobby from shopping those goods to get uh, some healthier uh, hobby. Thank you. Okay, so um, a very interesting answer. I liked how he sort of went into the psychology of buying expensive goods or luxury goods. He's like, well, these people are just very sad maybe and they're trying to fill that hole with buying Gucci things. Um, interesting uh, takeaway. So clearly in terms of pronunciation, really very good. Um, this candidate clearly um, lives abroad, has got lots of practice, got used to his local accent and is using it well. Um, use lots of nice intonation. So in terms of he talked about new goods being released, he used really good intonation to be like released. Okay, so being able to use emphasis and show variations in tone. So sometimes his tone went up a little bit in pitch and sometimes it went down a little bit in pitch. Uh, he varied the speed of his words by saying things like, could the new thing to be released? Um, you can go window shopping, like to sort of emphasize certain words. So he used that really well. So pronunciation good. Fluency also great, um, kept the pace moving, moving on to new topics. That was very good. Um, there was a couple of phrases where he could have improved in terms of grammar and vocabulary. So at one point he says, in the mall there are so many things uh, to look around and eat. Okay, so it should a more natural phrase would be at the shopping mall. There are so many things to see, um, to see and taste, or to look at and um, eat while walking, or there's such a variety of things to do, or you know, it's a a, we, so a phrase we can use in English. I don't know how natural we we call it a feast for the senses sounds like I'm writing a novel, <laughs> Feast for the Senses, like there's lots of things to see and do. 
Um, so this this use of the word look around uh, wasn't quite correct. So there's such a variety of things to see, eat, taste, um, and buy or experience, you know. So in English, we like the rule of three. We like things to come in lists of three. So you could say there are so many things to see, eat, and experience. Okay, it sounds much more natural that way. Um, and the only thing in terms of um, vocabulary is at the end of his answer, he said, I suggest that people change their hobby from shopping, um, from shopping those. People change their hobby um, from shopping. from shopping those things or shopping those goods, okay? So it shouldn't necessarily be shopping those. I reckon that people people should change their hobby from shopping to something else or change their hobby from shopping, um, shopping those. It should be buying those, from buying those kind of goods uh, to something more healthy, okay? So those are the only things that sort of jumped out at me. Um, in terms of uh, their answer, it was a pretty solid answer. So in terms of pronunciation, I would definitely want to give a seven, very natural, sort of no issues with the pronunciation at all. In terms of vocabulary, pretty good. I would want to give a 6.5, uh, quite nice vocabulary range. Would have liked to have seen a bit more high-level vocabulary, but very strong in terms of using natural phrases, natural English. Uh, in terms of grammar, I would also want to give a 6.5, very sort of accurate grammar. Um, just they really need to be careful of their third person plural making sure you're always pluralizing uh, when it's the third person. And just be careful, especially of their determinants. There was a couple of times where he missed out at and the in his speaking. At and the is very hard um, to sort of catch yourself doing it. Record yourself, listen back, and check, write out what you said in your answer and check to see if you used at and the properly. Uh, in terms of fluency and coherence, I thought really good. I, I would give a, a seven for that. Very sort of fluent, everything hung together well, very logical. Um, so I guess in the real exam, they tend to round up. So you probably might come out at a seven. Um, so I'd be happy giving this candidate a seven. Um, and just say that I would suggest that they work on their sort of grammatical range. Um, they didn't really show me a uh, high enough level grammar to move up into the next band. And the same with their uh, vocabulary as well. So that's my recommendation.